Thank you, Madam Chair. First and foremost, I want to thank the Senate President and the Majority Leader and his staff, and of course you, because this has not been an easy issue to uh, lead the committee on, and I think you've done an excellent job, and that's your balance of temperament when you have such a polarizing issue. I want to go back for a second. The sponsor of this bill has put forth legislation that sets forth provisions that do, in fact, codify Roe versus Wade. And then the bill, post-viability, has a standard that, frankly, uh, troubles me. And it troubles me greatly. So I'm committed to codifying Roe versus Wade. And in that light, I put forth a piece of legislation that I believe does just that. And in my bill, there are, in fact, reasonable restrictions post-viability. What do I mean by that? I'm going to take both bills and I'm going to look at them side by side. So the sponsor's bill talks about language from Roe versus Wade that Senator Lombardi quoted earlier. Neither the state nor any of its agencies or political subdivisions shall restrict an individual person from preventing, commencing, continuing, or terminating that individual's pregnancy prior to fetal viability. The termination of an individual's pregnancy after fetal viability is expressly prohibited except for a medical emergency. And then the bill sets forth the definition of medical emergency and it sets forth the definition of fetal viability. My bill. Neither the state nor any of its agencies or political subdivisions shall restrict an individual person from preventing, commencing, continuing, or terminating that individual's pregnancy prior to fetal viability. The termination of an individual pregnancy after fetal viability, viability is expressly prohibited except when necessary in the good faith clinical medical judgment of the physician to save the life of the individual or in the event of a medical emergency or if a continuation of the pregnancy will impose on the individual a substantial risk of grave impairment to their physical or mental health. The definitions of fetal viability and medical emergency are the same in my bill and the sponsor's bill 152A. And the language that codifies Roe right up front is the same, absolutely the same. How do the bills differ? Senator Oya went into a, a very articulate definition of the tenants in the second page of the sponsor's bill and the parameters of that bill. I don't need to be redundant on that. It's online and you can read it. it essentially says that there's a threshold that has to be satisfied for termination. Termination of an individual's pregnancy after fetal viability is expressly prohibited except when necessary in the medical judgment of the physician to preserve the life or health of that individual. So what's the difference? That's the sponsor's language, and my language says termination of an individual pregnancy after fetal viability is expressly prohibited, except for when necessary in the good faith clinical medical judgment of the physician to save the life of the individual. It's indisputed that you want to save the life of the individual. You have to. Pro-choice, pro-life pro, uh, people who agree that uh, in, in having some measure of control all agree on that. Or in the event of a medical emergency, clearly if there's a medical emergency, you want to save the individual. What human being would say you don't want to save someone if there's a medical emergency? Or if a continuation of the pregnancy will impose on the individual a substantial risk of grave impairment to their physical and mental health. That's the Massachusetts standard. Grave impairment. It's got to be real serious in order to have an abortion post-viability in the eighth month or ninth month. I don't think anyone would disagree on that. Grave impairment. If you look up the definition of grave, grave's a very high threshold. It means you're going to look very seriously, if you're a doctor, at the circumstances surrounding the mental health issue. My opinion on that section in the sponsor's bill is that it falls far too short. And I think 152A has removed the laws permissible on the road that my brother, Senator Lombardi, said are... are allowed by the state to regulate this area. I don't think the safeguards from the sponsor's bill are adequate. I don't think they're sufficient. 
There are other parts of the bills that are very similar and some parts that differ. And I want to touch on those quickly. I think that the sponsor in taking out unconstitutional language under where it says abortion on the second page was right. That language has been ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court and it has to come out. If you look at my bill, I took it out. Then if you go on to willful killing of an unborn quick child, the sponsor's bill took this out. I don't know if everyone knows what the willful killing of an unborn quick child is. I didn't know. I prosecute and I do criminal defense work and I didn't know what that meant. Let me give you an example. A woman's pregnant with a child and she gets murdered. Right now, we can bring charges for two murders in the state of Rhode Island. The sponsor's bill takes that out. I talk with folks about this language and how it troubled me. And they presented a couple of clauses from other states. They said they were troubled too. These are the advocates for pro-choice. They said they were troubled by that language and they were gonna work to change it. As I sit here today, the bill before me doesn't have any of those changes. Takes it out. I'm not comfortable with taking it out. Woman goes to PPAC with her husband to see a show and she's going back to her car and she gets killed because a drunk driver hits her and she's eight months pregnant and you can't bring charges for the murder of that baby? We want to take that out of the bill? Really? I don't. My bill puts that language back in. So that's another marked distinction between the sponsor's bill and my bill. As for the ban on what people call partial birth, that's not really an accurate term. My wife is a nurse and I've learned from her and talking to enough doctors and clinicians that it's really a uh, late term. That's the correct term of art to use here, if you will, in, in, the, in this uh, realm of, of uh, medicine. It's late term. And uh, I'm troubled over the removal of what's currently in the law under partial birth and I understand what the sponsor wrote up front on the bill in the second page, um, but I don't think it addresses late-term abortion adequately enough. And I stress that in the standard that's used for uh, post-viability abortions. I'm troubled by that. And I think that language doesn't adequately address uh, abortions. There's some other unconstitutional language uh, on the uh, sponsor's bill on page six. And I think uh, that was smart to be redacted. Again, page eight on health insurance contracts. That's, that's unconstitutional. There's also unconstitutional language under uh, line 21. Any city or town has been redacted. That should be removed. If you look at my bill, it's removed as well. So that we're on an even playing field when we're dealing with health insurers and, and women getting proper health coverage for abortions. One other thing my bill does that the sponsor's bill doesn't do, and that is... My bill makes it a felony for a doctor to uh, willfully violate the parameters of this bill for an abortion and conducts one. Now, you might ask yourself, what doctor would ever do that? Well, in life, things happen that we don't anticipate. And so we put things in the law so that if these things happen, we know how to deal with them. I think making a felony will make doctors very mindful that if they're ever going to deviate from the standards of the law, they're going to be held accountable. And we heard a lot of testimony from a lot of people over 13 hours up here. And you know something? One doctor showed up from delivering a child and was against abortion and completely had an entirely different argument on another doctor who delivers children and was for abortion. So when even the experts disagree, that should tell you something, that it's not easy to put into the law provisions that are going to adequately safeguard all people. And I think that holding doctors to a strict standard of discipline and uh, making it a felony should they deviate from those standards is reasonable. And I pray that no doctor will ever do that. This is a very polarizing issue. I made my thoughts known and I posted them online yesterday. I've been inundated with emails and telephone calls and 
All along, I've committed to codifying Roe v. Wade. I am pro-choice, and I do support a woman's right to choose. I do not favor or support or endorse late-term abortions as defined by the sponsor's bill. And it troubled me so much that I worked on this piece of legislation. There have been some comments made about me posting this bill last night. The sponsors had a look at this bill for some time. And the sponsor and some of the other folks that are proponents of this legislation outright rejected my bill. They didn't come back with any offer, any compromise. The sponsor actually was in the paper saying, I don't plan on supporting amendments intended to water down the bill. In my seven years in the Senate, I've found that some of the best legislation that comes about comes about through compromise through keeping an open mind and through working on principles. To have a mindset that is predisposed to, I'm not going to accept anything, doesn't lend itself to anything other than the chaos you see up here today. Step back for a second, it's a polarizing issue. Do you think some of this chaos could have been avoided if we all sat down and talked about some of the aspects of this bill. When I was coming in the Senate tonight, I was coming from court. I had a court case late. I was over in courtroom nine, Superior Court. When I was coming here, I saw a rep in the parking lot. And that rep said, I hope you're going to support the bill. And I said, rep, have you read my bill? No. And the rep came at me pretty hard about all the reasons why I should support this bill and hadn't even read my bill. I don't act rashly. I don't act on impetuous thoughts. I don't do things in a way that doesn't take into consideration all the information I can before I make my decisions. I've listened very carefully and I've thought about this issue in great detail and I've looked very deeply at the contrast between my bill and the sponsor's bill. And boy, I really wish that we had sat down at the table and been able to talk about compromises to the bill, but I'm not the sponsor. I'm just a senator. And so for those reasons and all the reasons I've stated in here today, I'm not comfortable with the language in 152A. And I want to be real clear. I'm committed to supporting a woman's right to choose and codifying Roe versus Wade. And before you're so quick to criticize me in the language that you see in the present bill, take a look at my bill and you tell me what you think. Thank you.